I've read my first Icelandic classic and in today's video I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Aistan and I'm trying to become a bookworm and in today's video we're going to talk about Haldur Laxness and his book Independent People. Laxness is not an author I had heard of before I started this YouTube channel but many of you have mentioned his name in the comments so I was intrigued and thought I had to read this novel at some time. After my eyes were opened to his authorship I of course saw that he had won the Nobel Prize for Literature and he seems to be a big deal in the Nordic literary community. So what is this book about? It's set in Iceland in the late 1800s, early 1900s. The location is a very rural sheep farm where we meet the farmer Bjartur. He is a very proud and stubborn man and he has fought for his independence for 18 years. Finally, he now owns a small piece of land where he tends to his sheep. Basically, this is an epic story about Iceland's history while we focus on this one sheep farmer and his perspectives of the world which are usually very narrow. So firstly, I started this a while ago and I had to take a break. That has nothing to do with the story itself, but the translation. And if I look into this book, it actually says J.A. Thompson was born in Berwick upon Tweed in 1910. His translation of Independent People was his only work of translation, the labor of many years and is considered to be the finest translation into any language of Luxness masterpiece. Well, that is obvious because there are many difficult words that I would presume that many of you also would struggle with. I hope. So in the first hundred pages I had to Google a lot, but even Google wasn't sufficient in many of the cases. And I'll read a little text because there's one guy on Amazon who really saved me while I read this story. The book needs a better translation. The translator's use of archaic and uncommon English words is distracting. For example, the word bigging is used on the first few pages to denote the ruins in the valley. There is a man called the Fell King. Most English readers wouldn't know that Fell means mountain. I wonder why the translator didn't call him the Mountain King. Me as well. And the funny thing is that many of these words are actually quite similar to Norwegian because I would presume that he has taken some of the Norse language and used the original words or similar words at least. But it made it quite difficult. I do not know if there's a newer translation but if you get this edition be aware there might be some very very old language. But after a little break I got some spare time and I could read a lot of pages in one go that really helped me forward. This is actually the first book where I actually started all over again after exceeding 100 pages just because I felt it was important to get a fresh start. The story actually begins by talking about the history of Iceland and yet again as I did with Kestin Lavansata I felt like I was a part of a fancy novel. And I'll just read the first sentence so you catch my drift. In early times, say the Icelandic chronicles, men from the western islands came to live in this country and when they departed left behind them crosses, bells and other objects used in the practice of sorcery. And then it goes on to talk about ghosts and dark forces. So a very intriguing start and not anticipated at all so it caught me off guard which I really enjoyed. From there on out it's pretty much about Bjartur and things revolve around him. When trying to describe Bjartur I think he describes himself best when he says that he's more accustomed to talking to sheep than actually talking to humans because he doesn't have that many social skills and is also very archaic himself and stubborn and he likes to do things his own way. And if someone disagrees with him they can go to hell or just disappear. But I think Laxness wrote about Bjartur also with a touch of love because the character Bjartur is so well established in the start of the book that you sort of get his reasoning and understand why he ends up doing the things he does even though you don't agree at all. One example of this is that Bjartur don't believe in loaning money and he sort of drives his family mad and he ruins a lot of opportunities for himself because of this but since you know that he is an independent man and has fought for his freedom, you get that he has this mindset. Even though it's hard to think that you would have done the same thing. 
Something that surprised me with the story is that there is very little character development, almost none. There is something happening towards the end of the book, but I don't know what to think about it. Or that being said, I'm still thinking about it without forming an opinion about it. The other important person in this story is Bjartur's daughter, Osta Solilia. She doesn't demand much, but she gets nothing. And I felt bad for her through the whole story. And at one point she sort of disappears from the story and the whole time I'm just sitting there waiting for her return. Because she becomes a very strong character in the book even though she's not mentioned. Also the birth of Osta Solilia is maybe the worst thing I've read in a book ever. It's really really gut-wrenching. Let's just say I was very unhappy with how Bjarto dealt with that situation. I think I think I'll end it there to not spoil too much. But those pages describing how she came into this life will live on with me forever I think. So the book is called Independent People and often when you read classics very many things are understated. They are not mentioned as much. It's sort of just the theme of the book and then just have to think about it yourself. But this book is the complete opposite. I haven't googled how many times independence is mentioned in this book, but it has to be a lot. I actually found it quite refreshing in the start, but after a while I sort of got tired of listening to Beato talk about independence and the importance of independence, but it certainly got the point across. And talking about independence, they also discuss a lot of politics in this book, especially around the subject of cooperatives and I found this topic to be a bit tiresome and a bit too much. So that wasn't a part I especially liked. Other people trying to persuade Bjartur of doing something he didn't want to and him refusing and that's basically what happens. More things happen but I found it just to be a big waste of time often. One thing that I did want to hear more about when reading this story was the aspect of superstition and folklore, Icelandic history. Each time these ghosts or talk about ghosts came up I got really excited and wanted to know more so I'm a bit... I was a bit frustrated that that wasn't a bigger part of the story but it sort of would have felt weird if it was as well. And that's because the story is mainly about Bjartur and his small farm, so it may have been weird if the folklore part of the story would have taken a bigger chunk of it. I don't know. The thing I enjoyed the most about the story, and I almost always enjoy most about stories, is the humor. And in this case it's quite grim, which I enjoy even more. At one point World War I breaks out, and Bjarto is basically very happy because the prices of his sheep are skyrocketing. So he could not be happier. He sort of wants this war to go on forever. Which is just so so dark. But also so in character for him as a person. So that I just found hilarious. And it gets grimmer when you think about this being published in 1934 and 35. Things didn't pick up from there. And there's this one scene where Bjartur thinks he's facing the devil and he's just his most stubborn self. Standing up to the devil he'll rather die than lose his independence. And it's just told in this weirdly funny way. But I genuinely loved the sense of humor in this book. It got really dark at times because this is not a happy novel. And I very much appreciate that that's something that the author was able to do in this kind of story. The next thing I thought I would speak about is the timelessness of this book. Because many people talk about timelessness as something that has to be there in order for a book to be a classic. And I get why they would think that way. And this is a great example of a novel that really is timeless. Because it's about fight against nature, it's fight for survival, it's fighting to control your own life and it doesn't get more basic than that. I think the best example of this is that when I started reading this book I didn't know when it was set. So I thought it was set in the middle ages, that's where I started and then things were happening and I understood that well we're in the 1800s but that took me quite some time. It just underlines the timelessness of it, I guess. 
And even when they discuss politics, you can easily draw lines between things that are happening today and the things they are discussing in this book. I gave this novel 3 out of 5 stars. Often when I'm nearing the end of a novel, I tend to give it a higher rating in my mind than I actually thought of it. But with this novel, I thought all along that I enjoyed it, but it was a 3 out of 5 star. And that's because all of my ratings are based on my enjoyment of the actual reading process. So even though I thoroughly enjoyed it, I at times felt like I had to give it more than it actually gave back and it was kind of slow. But I actually don't think there's any way of shortening this book. I felt like everything was in the place it should be and in that way perfect. Another thing I've been thinking a lot about lately is that all the books that I end up thinking about after I've read them, I've given 3 out of 5 stars. So this book is not yet processed up here. It will take months before I'm actually able to form a real opinion about what I thought about it. Because I know that my life will bring me back to this novel and make me reflect on it many times. And I guess for many people that would mean that this is a 5 star novel. And I sort of get that because... When a book brings you into new perspectives and gives you new insights and ways of thinking, that's worth it. But as far as my reading experience goes, this is a 3 star. You might think now that I would have given it a 4 star if I read this in Norwegian rather than English with this especially difficult for me translation, but I don't think so. I found the language very beautiful, but I'm just not able to discuss language in itself. To give you a quick summary, I'm very happy I read it. It will live on forever in my mind. I will think about Bjartur each time I meet my real life Bjarturs, which is something that's going to happen. I'm pretty sure I will read more books from uh, Haldo Laxness. I've certainly bought books from the author, so that's one incentive. I could have been speaking a lot more about this book, but I think I'll leave it at that. Have you read it or are you thinking about reading it? Please comment below. And thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!